So today I wanted to talk about how you can start investing if you are not trained in finance. So to give you a bit of background to who I am, uh, I studied social work at the University of Nottingham. And you might be thinking, uh, what's social work? Well, social work is really about helping people who might not uh, be rich, uh, they might be vulnerable, or might they might be poor. And in social work, a lot of the work is done not for profit. So that's why a lot of the work is carried out by charities or by governments. And if you look at the nature of social work, we absolutely don't learn about finance simply because uh, we are trying to help people without money uh, rather than think about how to make more money from them. And so you might be thinking, well, uh, why, why should I listen to this guy, right? If you studied social work, you'll probably not get that good at making money. You are good at helping people save money uh, or helping people without money, but you're not very good at making money. And I have to admit, that's true. Over the past four years of investing, you've seen the results. I've actually lost $3,036 out of a total capital of $56,000. And if you look at it, that's about a 5.4% loss over the past four years. Why should you listen to me? Well, I think the first reason is because since those losses, I've learned about the processes that help a person that's not trained in finance to build a better investment decision process. And the second reason is because I talk to many people who don't invest. And I realized that some of the limiting beliefs like I don't know how to invest or I need to learn more before I invest or investing takes a lot of time and effort and a lot of knowledge before I can start uh, to be some myths that uh, will uh, be addressed over the course of this short sharing. And so what is the first principle? First principle is to play judo. As a small investor who probably doesn't know much about finance, you might not be familiar with the fancy models or the discounted cash flows or the quantitative models that people use as professional fund managers. You might not be even used to managing billions or trillions of dollars that the biggest fund managers manage. But you have certain advantages. Firstly, your advantage is that you can invest in small caps. Small cap companies are those that have a market capitalization of often below a billion dollars. And the reason why many institutional investors do not touch it is because there are legalities that require them to own less than 5% of the company or be forced to declare and make a special application to own more of that company. That's why with many hedge funds holding billions of dollars, it makes it hard for them to research into small cap stocks. There lies the investment opportunity for you because in those small caps, without the big institutional players, that means that these stocks aren't as researched as much. There lies the opportunity for mispricing, either they're priced too high or either they're priced too low. And therein lies your advantage. The second advantage as a retail small investor that might not know much about investing is this. Peter Lynch in his great book uh, One Up on Wall Street <laughs> which you can see uh, right here is a really great fund manager. In it he writes, dumb money is only dumb when it listens to smart money. 
very often we think that as small investors without any finance knowledge we unable to conduct research or talk to CEOs to learn about the stock's prospects or to even understand the accounting information that makes you go to sleep whenever you read them. Uh, but here's an example from my personal life. In 2017, I was looking at this stock called Silver Lake Access, which does fintech uh, applications and looked really fancy. After all, it sounded like fintech was the way to go. Uh, my mum, on the other hand, told me a lot about this supermarket called Sheng Xiong, where she always got her latest groceries for a very cheap price. What I didn't realize at that time was that instead of sticking to simple businesses that were things I understood, I stuck to businesses that I couldn't really understand, like Silver Lake Axis. And the danger of that, as you can see, uh, Silver Lake Axis went on to give really bad returns, uh, dropping more than 25%, while Sheng Xiong uh, went on to reach big heights, uh, gaining more than 70%. Well, you might look at this and you might ask, okay, so where is the advantage for me as an investor? Well, the advantage for you is that as an investor, you are already doing research. Whenever you go to a store or a mall, or you eat something that tastes nice, drink something, the first question you can ask yourself is, is this company listed? Is this company listed? And then when you start looking more closely at the company, then you will begin to realize if the company has some great prospects. Very often, as investors without any financial knowledge, you are able to detach yourself from the numbers, uh, from all the information that you can get as a professional, and to really look at the business as it is. So for example, for Sheng Xiong, uh, one thing I realized is that people were buying more and more and more and more of my friends were going there. Whereas for Silver Lake Axis, I couldn't really say I understood it. So the one lesson that you can learn is to do simple things well. To learn how to understand the simple businesses rather than the difficult ones. Go for the one foot hurdle rather than the ten foot high one. The next one is to have a process. My process, as you can see from here, is that firstly I will use Stockopedia, uh, which I will explain a bit more, uh, to screen. And then I will read the annual reports for the past five years and then ask questions like, uh, what's the vision of this company? How has it executed on its vision over the years? And lastly, I will ask questions of myself. Uh, do I understand this business. Stockopedia is a really good screening tool and I have to admit that I've been cheating over the past few years. Uh, I just keep renewing the free trials uh, to allow myself to gain uh, some free use of the premium website. But it offers a unique way for you to understand the numbers behind the business with out getting too caught up in not knowing the financial knowledge. So for example, this is Sheng Xiong uh, and you can see very quickly that there are the stock ranks listed at the site. This gives you a relative measure of how good it is. So at the same time, you can then see the indicators for its value its quality and its momentum. Stockopedia is based on factor investing where it looks at three different factors quality, value and momentum. And as you use more Stockopedia you can use it as a screening tool to study stocks that might be interesting for you. 
last one is that you need to start somewhere you can listen to this and tell yourself that I don't know much about investing and that's okay but it's important to start somewhere because with investing you get the chance to build up not just your wealth but also a better world by buying into val companies whose values you admire and whose values you align with so for example one of the companies that I enjoy is Apple who has great <laughs> values about environmental sustainability how it treats its workers and how it treats people and as you buy into companies you're essentially supporting their work think of it as you being a patron of their work and think of it as leveraging the company's strengths to build a world that is more aligned to your values if you think of investing in that way then it no longer becomes such a scary thing because all of us are going to make mistakes uh, but over the long term it is the values that will hold out and that's why in your process decisions thinking about the values the company holds and how it's executed on those values and its vision helps you to search for companies that hold on to enduring values rather than trying to profit the shareholder at the expense of others one way you can start is to do a monthly investment into a tracker index like an exchange traded fund and over time this does dollar cost averaging if you're not familiar with this concept basically it's about buying at regular intervals like monthly so for example if every month you bought $200 and at that particular month if it was quoted at $10 per share you buy 20 of it if the next month it was quoted at $20 per share you buy 10 of it and over time as you buy more less more less the dollar cost average will help you to ensure that you are stuck in for the long run rather than being hurt by the short-term churns of the market so it is the time spent in the market rather than the time spent into and out of the market that will count it is the time spent in the market rather than time spent trying to time the market that will help you to determine your longest term success you know in closing you can listen to this and you can think well that sounded nice uh, but I still don't know how to start I love this quote from Carlos Castaneda who says a man of wisdom is a man of action not one who thinks about action the truth is that if you are already putting your money in an investment uh, account like in a bank account uh, the bank is already investing it for you so maybe today it's time to take the step up and to use your money to build a world whose values you align to rather than thinking about just making a world whose values the bank aligns to the bank might be invested in fossil fuels, in drugs, in cigarettes and those might not be values that you align to so if you're scared today here's something hopeful none of us gets it right the first time but you get it by learning doing and learning from it and over time you build a world that's more aligned to who you are 
and how you want the world to be. Thank you.